well, when I, when I came to the table here, it was a tough safety I had on, so I was, I was really planning and putting the yellow, but if I can remember right, I got a little bit lucky, because the way I flicked the pink, I then worked out that basically I would maybe only need one snooker uh, with the pink and black left. So I was putting this green and it was pretty easy brown. But then I can always remember uh, John Virgo saying, well, he's got, to, he's got to start getting snookers with the blue, pink and black left because if you get down to the pink and black, you've only really basically got one chance. But Sometimes you've only got one chance in this position. And with me being 32 behind with the yellow, I was, I was giving myself right, I've got a good chance here to come down off the bottom cushion and leave myself a decent a decent snooker and opportunity. Uh, you've got two the snooker behind, that'd be amazing. So when I put this blue, well, he's put all his... I basically, I basically come perfect. I, I basically leave myself a really good chance of doing it but I still didn't know if it was going to be good enough even if I'd have got it to to stop Judd from hitting the pink but when I played the pink there it's I was wanting to bounce a little bit but then when you think about it with it being tight on the cushion it, it was difficult to hit and with the middle bag been, been in the way a little bit he had to basically stun off the side cushion to, to make the angle so he could hit the pink, but he's obviously stunned into the white far too much. And then it's it's left him a it's left me I can win now, but it's left you a horrible shot here because he's not really got an easy safety on. Uh, and he actually played the pink quite well. He, he's, 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 he's made as good a job as as he probably could have. He, he could have possibly maybe went up and down the, the spots, but he was maybe thinking the way he's playing the pink here, he's he's definitely going to leave it safe. And that was probably his first objective. But when I came to the table, it wasn't a straight on double, but I was going for it. It was old Dennis, Dennis Taylor saying that if I could see it, I was going for it. And uh, especially with me needing snookers in that frame, I was getting myself all geared up to be 17, 16, but I had to punch this in off the cushion and uh, potted it and then obviously left myself a very difficult black under the circumstances, obviously to win, win the world title. Now you see my, my brother-in-law and my two kids and my wife just up there. Uh, but it's a funny story with, with this black ball that I'd played a few shots during this final and I'd overcut them playing a similar sort of shot and I actually played to miss this. I played to actually hit it. I actually played to, to hit, hit it thicker because I must have been flicking a bit of side on with, 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 with my action or whatever during the final. And in a way I played to miss it and the, the way I must have just flicked a little bit of side on with extension. And uh, you see my middle boy there, he, I think he was getting a bit emotional obviously. It's like, I think is that daddy actually won, uh, and then the wife, and then my mother-in-law. She was there as well. So, uh, so I just, I, I, I've always said it. Now we, the first one we Ken beat Ken in the final in 20 years ago now, 98, and that one will live with me forever. Because at the end of the day, that that's what you'll always remember. And that's if you if you ever will see YouTube footage in the future, and you've got. CDs in the house and things like that, but to actually to actually see that happen and, and, and you can share it with your family and everything, it was a, a brilliant moment. Brilliant.